Evening folks, Brian here at Geo Magnetic Earth Watch, Friday, November 7, 2025. This evening's talk, we're going to talk about uh, under which conditions create geomagnetic instabilities, solar storms. We're going to start off by talking about the uh, interplanetary magnetic field or the IMF, which is the, uh, mag uh, the magnetic field carried by the solar wind as it flows through our solar system originating from the sun. So it plays a significant role in how solar wind interacts with Earth's magneto, magnetosphere, uh, influ influencing conditions such as the auroras and the development of uh, geomagnetic storms. So the IMF is described as a uh, spiral pattern or the Parker spiral created by the sun's rotation and the outward flow of the solar wind. So if anything is ejected from the sun, it's not going to be a straight line. It's going to follow in a spiral pattern. I'll show you an image in a minute. And the, I, the IMF normally makes an angle of approximately 45 degrees to the sun-earth line. Though this angle can vary with the solar wind speeds. So let's uh, show you. So the yellow is the sun green is the earth so this is the parker spiral motion of anything ejected from the sun as you can see here because of the rotation of the sun so in order to create uh geomagnetic instability solar storms there has to be a connection between Earth's magnetic field and the magnetic field embedded in the solar winds. There has to be a southern component with Earth's uh, magnetic field northern orientation. So the magnetic field lines from Earth leave the south magnetic cusp, envelop the Earth, circle around, rise north, and come back into the north magnetic cusp. So there has to be a connection like the opposite ends of a bar magnet, for example in order to allow for the uh, introduction or the entry of the highly uh, charged particles into our magnetosphere. So I'm going to see if I can uh, show you through some of these uh, pictures. So the sun, uh, in this example, throws off a coronal mass ejection, CME. And the CME magnetic field is orientated as south in the southerly direction, whereas magnetic Earth's magnetic field lines are orientated north. So there will be a meeting, a connection between the southern component of the solar winds carrying the magnetic field for the CME and Earth's northern component. So the purpose of this talk, we only want to be concerned with the BZ value, not the BX, which follows the ecliptic plane, or pardon me, the plane between uh, Sun and Earth. So what we want to be concerned about is the orientation or the direction of flow of the solar winds, whether it's southern or northern. So when we pull up the uh, Space Weather Prediction Center, a lot of people just concentrate on here on what the predicted severity of the solar storm is going to be, but they really don't pay attention to these values, the solar wind magnetic field. So BT value is the total strength of the interplanetary magnetic field. The higher the value, the better for the possibility of enhanced geomagnetic conditions. The BZ value is more important, <clears throat> and that is the north-south direction of the IMF, interplanetary magnetic field. So when that orientation is to the south, it will connect with the orientation of Earth's northern direction magnetic field lines, which creates our geomagnetic uh, instability. So once this value enters the negative values, starting at around negative 10 nanoteslas, that's when we start getting into our geomagnetic instabilities. This is why I found this... Uh, application here very useful the uh, interplanetary magnetic field real-time live visualization 
which shows the magnetic field lines around the Earth based on the solar wind data. So as you can see, there's a southern component here, whereas Earth's magnetic field is the northern direction, so it's making it a connection, resulting in geomagnetic instabilities. Let's check right now. So, uh, oh, okay, so... So 90 minutes ago, we reached, uh, we're very close to G3, strong geomagnetic storm conditions, actually. We did reach it. Seven. Let's see what Noah says. Not yet. This is not part of the video, but I just want to check the overall display. So intensifying as of now. All right. Now all this analysis, data gathering, and prediction and models is based on the assumption that other people on YouTube don't realize. It's based on the assumption that we have a 100% full strength magnetic field, <clears throat> uh, which needs a more or less anti-portal positioning of the magnetic poles. So more or less, directly opposite to each other. They don't have to be exact. They meander, they wander around. But a lot of people don't realize that we're in the middle, we're in the beginning phases of a geomagnetic excursion. Magnetic North, which used to be in Nunavut, Canada until approximately 1904, has already started its beeline excursion heading into uh, Siberia. Magnetic South, moving slower, um, it's already left Antarctica and it's in the waters between Antarctica, Antarctica and Australia. So let me explain something. And this is something that nobody else seems to be catching up on, cluing in on. So a lot of people are talking about pole flip, magnetic pole flip. Oh, we're going to have a pole flip pretty soon. Magnetic poles, they're moving. First, we're on a geomagnetic excursion. It starts at this point. Basically, it started in 1904. Right. Way over here. This could be a thousand years. Okay. It could be 7,000 years away. Is when the poles would flip if this continues on the excursion course. It started here in 1904. This, which what people are talking about, this is anywhere from 1,000 to 7,000 years away. Some argue, say, it could be 10 times faster. But what no one realizes and reports on is the point in the middle is when the Earth starts to develop a multiple pole magnetic field resulting in four, six, or eight magnetic poles, not a dipole, two. This greatly destabilizes those magnetic field lines, and there's no longer a consistent organized flow from the south magnetic cusp running north. That is breaking down. That is what people do not know, do not realize, do not report on where they're talking, they're trying to describe under what conditions do we have geomagnetic storms? And this is why some people out there in YouTube land get kind of confused, dumbfounded. They don't know what's going on when all of a sudden we have a geomagnetic storm in the absence of, well, there's really nothing happening out there. At some point in the middle, Earth develops a multipolar magnetic field. People need to do their homework. So I just want to briefly explain uh, what what we look at to determine 
when we're going to be going into geomagnetic instability solar storms. You can have very fast solar winds, but if they're not orientated and connected with Earth's magnetic field, so if the solar winds uh, have a northern direction or component with Earth's magnetic field, there is no connection. Those solar winds are going to continue to flow over the planet, past the planet. If the solar winds have a southern direction, a southern dire sorry, a southern direction, and Earth's magnetic field lines is like this, we have a connection. Okay, we have a connection. They're going to break. They're going to break through fractures in the magnetic field, ripples, openings, the solar particles. Okay, in between the magnetic field lines, and then they're going to reach Earth. Hey, not bad. I just thought of that, right? Okay, Earth's magnetic field lines, right? Normally, stabilized. Solar winds come in. If they make a proper connection, they're going to break through. Fall, uh, going back to the geomagnetic excursion, that magnetic north is moving faster than magnetic south. It's as if there is something preventing magnetic south from moving faster or harder. So if this is planet Earth, red is north, white is south. If you bring in a larger magnet coming up from the south, a celestial body, cell, if it tries to make that magnetic connection, it's a magnet. It's going to try and keep magnetic south in place from going any further. Hint, hint. So I have to do this video in segments and I splice it all together. I don't know how long it is. If I think there's a few more minutes, I'm going to give you another pictorial representation. I've done this a few times. Uh, this is one of my uh, educational tools I like using. So here we go. That was one of my favorite teaching pictures I like to use to explain the different uh, events that can happen on our sun using the uh, discharging of the firearm. So the muzzle flash here. Uh, try and imagine this being the sun and the solar flare itself, that which we see the bright flash of light would be the muzzle flash containing the hard x-rays. Uh, now this uh, energy traveling at the speed of light only takes 8.3 minutes to reach us. So if this is earth uh, facing and if it's large enough, we can feel this. Now, sometimes, not always, a coronal mass ejection containing billions of tons of the highly charged particle and magnetic field is uh, ejected from the flare, from the muzzle. So consider this cloud of gas being the CME, being Earth-directed. Now, if it's not Earth-directed, like say it's the backside of the sun, we have what's called a halo CME. The other gas being expelled from the firearm, this would be considered the halo CME. Now also sometimes, following a uh, solar flare, within minutes to say a half hour, maybe an hour, we can have a solar proton event. Protons are also ejected. So imagine these uh, sparkles here being protons also ejected. And that's what gives us our solar radiation storms. So once again, the sun fires off a flare that which we see, sometimes it can eject a CME, sometimes it, if it's earth facing, it'll be earth directed, the CME. If we have a backside explosion on the sun, halo CME, this cloud of gas here being expelled. So, um, as I said, I believe in the process of the beginning stages of developing a multi multipolar field, which is going to result in multiple weak zones around our planet through our magnetic field. We don't know 
where they're going to pop up and for how long. They will know. We are not going to know. One example is, for example, earlier on the year, if you remember all of those grid down failures in Portugal, Spain, France, air traffic control, radar systems go down, telecommunication systems go down, United Kingdom, unexplained fires, substation fires, unexplained. Power failures in the subway system, that whole entire area with all of those anomalies and everything that happened there. I would suggest that that is one zone where there's a weakening in, magnet, in the Earth's magnetic field, for example. And I think it's only going to get worse. Hence the government shutdown and the necessity to ground a large percentage of air travel. I think it's only the beginning. Do you really think this is 3i Atlas, a little comet? Or that's what they want you to see? Or is it part of the system coming in from the bottom? And finally, remember the news from uh, the Department of Defense that we're restricting or no longer going to allow public access to certain satellite information. It's not just about the hurricanes and weather forecasting. The information from those uh, four satellites that they're no longer going to allow the public access to also contains information on one, the solar winds, two, the state of our magnetic field, three, the ionosphere, and four, the thermosphere. The four most important areas that we need to know that they're no longer going to let us know eventually. I would suspect that when this shutdown is finished, you're going to find some major changes, just like the last one. And the last one resulted in the <coughs> emic. That is all. <laughs>